My name is Lada Silva, um, and I, I was originally born in Brazil. Um, my mom moved at a very uh, young age. She left me in Brazil to come to America to uh, give me a better life, a better life for her as well. Once she was finally able to um, bring me to America, um, we, uh, you know, she we struggled obviously. Um, we grew up knowing that God existed, um, but I didn't know him personally. I didn't have, we didn't really go to church. Um, I didn't own a Bible. So for me, it was never, I, I, always, I always did feel like something was like missing, um, but you know, you go throughout life. Uh, and I, um, it wasn't until I went to college and I was uh, studying uh, to be a nurse, all my sciences, I loved it. However, um, I just felt so out of place in, in what I was learning and I felt like I wasn't going to be truly happy doing that. Um, but I made the abrupt decision to quit college and um, it made me feel just awful. I was depressed. I felt like a loser and a quitter. Um, and, uh, but I, I was living on my own with a roommate and I had to make a living. So I was bartending, I was serving um, at late nights, but I was just so empty. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life and what I didn't have a purpose. Um, and so it wasn't until my friend asked me like, well, what were you doing when you last felt truly happy? And it was, I had to think back elementary school when I was putting on dances and performances and shows, like that's when I felt happy and alive. And so she was like, just go for it. And uh, I did, and I showed up and it was an incredible, like I just felt at home, but it was also the same time that I started going to church. And I didn't realize that that passion that I had and that natural gift and, and talent that I, that I had that I didn't know I had uh, was given to me by God. Uh, I just lied dormant until I allowed him to really step into my life and I allowed him to guide me and, and help me because it's just a crazy journey to decide to be an actor. Um, so I, I realized I needed, I needed him to really guide me and he has been there this whole time, opening doors, closing some and uh, bringing me full circle on just an incredible uh, show like The Chosen where it's changing lives globally. So yeah. you, you came to faith a bit later in life. Yes. In yes. your 20s. Yeah, my mid-20s. How did people around you re respond when you made that decision? My mom was so happy. She grew up Catholic, um, so she just was happy that I had found my faith and my re my own relationship with Jesus. And um, I got, I got saved, you know, shortly at, right after I, I found acting um, and, and uh, yeah, it's just been, it's been an incredible journey since then and my friends have been really supportive. Um, I've ha I have friends that are also believers and some that are non, but they know that I don't, I don't push what I believe on, onto them or beat them over the heads with it. I just live a life where I speak openly about it and what God has done for me and be a light to others so that they can hopefully, you know, want, I feel like almost a positive influence for them without actually um, forcing it on my friends. So. What were those early days like auditioning? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to have thick skin. What Absolutely. was it like at the beginning? They were terrible. I mean, it still can be really daunting. But at first, it was scary. It's very scary showing up, not really knowing who you are, um, or you know, having that confidence in this in that in this industry. Like, you have to have it. And I'm still working on it. Um, but I know that I'm confident enough in how God sees me and what He's given me that that's what keeps me going. And uh, I'm just keeping at it you know it's always it's a learning experience no matter where you are in, in this career where did the first breakthrough come then and, and how do you feel God helped that come yeah. about so I before the chosen came about I had done a few other co-star um, roles and, and a couple guest star roles which are just you know you come in you work you say a few lines and then you're out on a, on a couple of um, great shows so that was um, a good experience, like learning experience, to get that out of the, to get that done on all my resume. But uh, with the chosen, uh, about three years before the chosen was even a thought, um, there was a, a, a young girl. She, uh, I quickly, we became really good friends. She was filming a uh, film, and um, she started working at a casting office 
um, in LA that was casting The Chosen. And when she saw it come through, she thought of me for the role of Mary Magdalene. And uh, I remember reading the script and thinking like, wow, this is about the life of Jesus. Like, this is really well done. I haven't seen anything like this. I've never felt, I was crying, I was in tears, um, you know, reading the script. So I knew that there was something special about it, but I didn't know, none of us would have known where it would be now today. But uh, I auditioned for Mary Magdalene. Uh, I didn't get the role. However, Dallas Jenkins, our director, um, just saw that, you know, saw me for a different role in mind so I then auditioned for the role of Eden and so just the process of that if, like I know a lot of people don't realize that but thousands and thousands of actors read for the for the role you know you're up against so many and I would have never known even known about the project had I known uh, this girl that I met who we became friends and she was uh, really strong in her faith and an actress as well so it's like I looked up to her and then it's like it's almost like a divine the dots connected divinely uh, that God placed people in my life um, to, yeah, bring me somehow on The Chosen. And, yeah, Dallas uh, loved, you know, what I did. So it's just, uh, it's so humbling and I, it's mind-blowing every time I talk so about it. what was that experience like on the set, particularly the first few days? It was so scary because it was the biggest set I feel like I had been on. Um, as far as like the role that I had, I had a, a, a lot of scenes, a lot of lines. It was the most, the most that I've had. Um, so it was uh, intimidating, and I felt like everybody was just so incredibly talented. And my first scene was with um, with Shahar Isaac, who plays Peter, and you know he had came from an, an incredible school in New York City and had studied drama and acting, and I felt like everybody had such great like resumes and I felt so like out of place because I felt like I didn't have all that fancy schooling and worth acting I just had you know my little theater in South Florida that I studied at and really my natural instincts and God and prayers <laughs> so um, but that's what makes me who I am and it took me a while to like accept that as well that that's just who I am as an actor and that's okay when you were filming, did you have any idea how it would just be so huge around the world? No, we had no idea. I, like I said, I knew that there was something so special about the script. And I, I trust God and I know that he can do impossible math. But we didn't know that we would be just where we are. The funding and the, and the, the love and the support that we've gotten from, from the, you know, the crowd and the fans and um, has been everything it's meant everything because we wouldn't be able to do it without the love and support and so here we are filming season four and we plan on doing seven seasons and that's it's a that's a god <laughs> what was it like the first time you were recognized when these people started recognizing you yeah um it is surreal and i just it's humbling because um you get to be i, I get to be a part of a show that's changing their lives so you know it's different I think when when we recognize actors out at an airport or you know at a restaurant um, there's a different there's a different feel I think with being a part of the show because um, not many actors get to say that they were on movies or, or TV shows that really saved lives um, like quite literally you know we've met fans that um, I met a young man who was suicidal and it wasn't until he saw the first season and Mary Magdalene's story and he gave us you know big hugs and it was just you could feel um, that people were genuinely moved and saved by seeing our show and that's special so so from the chosen what, what happened next what are the projects from the chosen um, so I've I've done um, I did a movie called Blue Ridge with uh, Jonathan Sheck I played a deputy and uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, I have also, you know, I'm, I'm in the film Divine Influencer. Uh, that's coming out August 4th, and you'll be able to stream it on Pure Flix. And um, it's just an incredible story as well, a woman's journey. She's very different from Eden. She is, uh, an, a, she's an influencer, but she's very entitled, and she's very narcissistic. Um, but she's not malicious. She just has 
no idea of people around her and how there's people in need. You know, she's a very, she's got this attitude of like, uh, me first, you know, it's all about me until she realizes that uh, she uh, loses everything. Um, she gets, she becomes homeless and loses her job and car. Her parents cut her off as a, as a uh, teaching lesson and she starts working at a homeless shelter, but that's where she realizes that serving others has now influenced her and gives her a purpose in what God wants her to do. So she finds the Lord there as well and um, she has an incredible journey. This movie I believe is going to be on Pure Flix, is that yeah. right? Yeah. So there seems to be a sort of shift in Christian or faith-based movies that are just becoming more popular. Yeah. They did have a reputation being a bit corny. Yes. <laughs> what do you think, what do you attribute to that shift? I think, honestly, even with The Chosen, um, it was the first show, you know, multi-season show about the life of Christ. But what makes us so special, why people relate to it so much is because there's humanity and there's stories written in there that are actually, they may not have necessarily been written in the Bible, but it could have been plausible to lead you to what you actually read in the Gospels. For instance, um, you know, who Eden is. We didn't know that she, that might not have been her real name, you know, in the Bible, but we knew that she existed because Jesus heals her mother. Um, so from there, the writers have written incredible, rich, marital stories that people can relate to and so I think that the faith-based world I'm hoping is going to be able to kind of emanate that and write real life situations that don't always have to be cookie cutter and very kind of cheesy and corny it can be real um, but it can you know always just still point you back to Christ and, and his love and, and what that means so I'm hoping that it continues that you know our, our faith-based films can continue to be excellent.